Sometimes those who have divine favor have to wrestle with demonic forces. Those who are blessed with talents have to deal with numerous attacks. Those who are often successful have found life to be stressful. Those who have divine favor don't always have an easy life. Just because they are children, are chosen, does not mean they are exempt. Just because they are caught by the, called up by the divine providence does not mean they are isolated from hurt, harm, and danger. Just because they live a life of purpose doesn't mean they can live a life free from pain. Joseph has favor of God, but yet Joseph will tell you, favor ain't fair. Amen. Favor does not guarantee life will be easy and life will be good. Favor does not assure that you will have no troubles and you will have no trials. Favor does not say you will have divine protection that will exempt you from hellish pain. Favor ain't fair. Amen. What's fair about living a nightmare just because God gave you a dream? Mm -hmm. What's fair about being hated by your brothers just because you are loved by God? Mm -hmm. What's fair about being thrown in a pit and sold as a slave? Mm -hmm. What's fair about being lied on because you, because you have integrity and thrown in jail on false charges? Hmm. What's fair about being forsaken by somebody you help and not hearing from a God who can help? Mm -hmm. Joseph had favor, and yet I see favor is not fair. Mm -hmm. See, favor is not just about being chosen. Favor is about being challenged. Amen. See, when God shows you favor, it's not just a it's, it's just not a promise for a blessing. It's also a guarantee for struggle. Mm -hmm. See, when you are blessed by the Almighty, you become a target for the demonic. Mm -hmm. When you are chosen by the divine, the devil puts a contract out on your soul. Right now. Favor ain't fair. Yes, yes. Oh, I tell you, there are some who want what others have, but don't want to face what others endure. They jealous of your blessing, but not realizing your burden. They envious of, your, of what you possess, with no understanding of the pain you went through to get it. Amen. They see your favor, but don't realize favor ain't fair. They criticize your accomplishments, but don't see your struggle. They see your favor, but don't realize favor ain't fair. Sometimes, because they focus on what the Lord is doing for others, we mishandle what's going on in our own lives. Mm -hmm. Some folks meddle in the lives of others because they can't handle their own business. Mm -hmm. Oh, they don't have no trouble sticking their nose where it don't belong, mm -hmm. even though they have no control over things that's their own responsibility. Mm -hmm. They quit to criticize those who play on the field, even though they can't handle life on the sidelines. Mm -hmm. They just find fault with the little everybody else does. They ain't going nowhere but have a problem with those who seek a destination. Because they satisfied with a little, they mad at those who are seeking more. Because they have learned how to endure life's nightmare, they take offense to those who have a dream. They know how to meddle in the affairs of others, but they don't know how to handle their own business. Amen. And if you want to know who those people are, those are the ones that ain't saying amen. <laughs> Lord Jesus. They quick to criticize what they can't control. They quit to give advice even though the life they live in is not being lived the way God intended. Mm -hmm. They have nothing, yet they want to tell you how to, what, how to use what you have. They have no goals, and they want to tell others how to live. Mm -hmm. They messed up their opportunity, but they want to scare you when you're ready to take a chance. Mm -hmm. Life has passed them by, yet they want to tell you how to live. Mm -hmm. They want to run your life even though they can't handle their own business. Mm -hmm. They want to guide you even though they don't know where they're going. Mm -hmm. They want to meddle in your affairs, even though they can't handle their own situation. Mm -hmm. They want to tell you what to do while they sit around doing nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to preach like I feel this morning. <laughs> it does not bother them that their life has no goal. Mm -hmm. they're, they're content finding fault with your vision. Mm -hmm. They know how to meddle in your business, but they don't know how to handle their own business. They can point a finger, but they can't take control. Amen. They can tell you what's wrong with your life, but they can't handle their own life. Mm -hmm. Oh, they can stir up mess, but they can't solve their own problem. Mm -hmm. They can gossip about the lives of others, but they don't have a testimony about the life they live in. Right. They don't understand that favor ain't fair. Mm -hmm. They want to work on you, but never work on self. Mm -hmm. They'll talk about your failures, 
but they never deal with their own flaws. Hmm. They'll find fault with your vision, but, they, but have no issue with their blindness. Hmm. They'd rather criticize the light that comes up out the dark, than, and they don't understand favor ain't fair. Hmm. They don't know how to handle their own business. Hmm. I tell you, if you want to overcome life being a victim of circumstance, all you got to do is learn how to handle your own business. If you want to move from enduring life to enjoying life, all you got to do is learn how to handle your own business. If you want to get what you want instead of taking what life dishes out, all you got to do is learn how to handle your own business. If you want to get from beyond being a number and be something others can't count on, all you got to do is handle your own business. You got to have a destination that's not based on what you see on the journey. Lord have mercy. Let me say that again. You got to have a destination that's not based on what you see on the journey. You have to have a vision that will not change your present day reality. You have to know how to use the bitter to get to the better. If you're going to overcome failure and succeed in life, you got to know how to handle your own business. Now, here, I don't, I don't want to know your business. I just want you to know how to handle your business. I didn't come here to tell you what to do, but I do want to tell you how to do it. I can't give you an assignment, and I can't tell you how to do the job you're supposed to do. Mm. I'm not trying to get in your business. I just want to tell you how to handle your own business. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't, want to, I don't want you to meddle in the, in the other folks' business, and I don't want you to tell everybody your business. Mm -hmm. All I want you to do is have, learn how to handle your own business. Mm -hmm. See, I want you to know who you are, and I want you to know why you are. I want you to know who brought you here and, I, and, I, and, I want, and, and what you're supposed to be doing while you're here. Mm -hmm. See, it's not enough to have life. You need to know your purpose for living. Mm -hmm. mm. You need to know your purpose for living. It's not enough to be here. You need to make a difference while you're here. I tell you, all of us, have life, all of us that have life are part of something bigger than life. Life is more than the life we live. Something was going on before we arrived, and something will be going on long after we're gone. Now listen, life is bigger than us, and all of us have a role to play in this life. None of us is indispensable, and yet all of us are essential. Amen. Mm, mm, mm. All of us have a role to play in the drama of life. And because we are part of the play, that's why life is so full of drama. Mm. And because we are part of the play, that's why life is so full of drama. Y'all get it. Mm -hmm. Because our life has a purpose, our life is often under attack. Because our name is in the script, there's an antagonist after our soul. Mm -hmm. See, if you're on the stage, your character will be attacked. Mm -hmm. If you say your lines, there will be a critic who has a problem right, with your yeah. performance. Even though you might have a small part, this you still may be under a major attack. Amen. You might not even have center stage, but it won't protect you from major criticism. Right, because man. you have life, rest assured, your life will be attacked. Mm -hmm. There is a director of the play and the antagonist in the drama. God wants you in the program and the devil wants to write you out of the script. Mm -hmm. That's why ever since you've been in the world and ever since you've been on the stage, there's been stress and there's been strain. The enemy wants you distracted and detoured. Mm -hmm. He wants you dejected and depressed. He wants you to feel dismayed and despair. But because Jesus died for you, Satan doesn't want you to live for God. All right, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus. Before you make it to heaven, he wants to make sure you catch a whole lot of hell. Mm. Because you are a poet, he wants to rob you of your pen. Because you were honest, he wants you to lay down your brush. Mm. Because he had a song that the angels cannot sing, he wants you to give up on your music. Yes. This world is not your home. Mm. This world is not your home. He wants you to lose sight of your final destination. Mm. Because he lost his privilege, he wants you to be blind to your purpose. He doesn't want you to know that you are a child of God and a joint heir of Christ. And that things belong to you. And through Christ, you can do all things. Yeah. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Amen. You are more than a conqueror through Christ who loves you. You have rights and you have responsibilities. You have a duty 
and you have a destiny. You can do more than what you see, and you are more than what you've done. Because of who you are and whose you are, you can rise up even though favor ain't fair. Amen. Because God has given you a purpose, you ought to use your power. Because God has given you an assignment, you need to exercise your authority. You need to rise up knowing favor ain't fair. Now here, you may not have what you want, but you can all, but you can use what you have. You may not be where you're headed, but thank God you are no longer where you were. Your life may not be perfect, but the good news is it can be better. All you have to do is realize favor ain't fair. You don't have to be overwhelmed and you don't have to be overworked. You don't have to be stressed out and you don't have to be pushed out. All you have to do is remember, favor ain't fair. All you have to realize is that what you, what you, you don't make up, which well, favor is not fair, and you don't have to make up for your elders or take slack for your friends. You don't have to bear a load too hard to bear or attempt a job you cannot do. All you have to do is realize favor ain't fair. Use your gifts and use your talent to handle your own business. Amen. Now listen, to handle your own business, you've got to know what your business is. Let me say that again. In order to handle your business, you need to know what your business is. To help to do what you're supposed to do, you're supposed to know what you're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. Now listen, this handling your business is not an event. It's a process. It's, it's not like a microwave. It's more like cooking with a crock pot. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. It's a process that you, that you have to take in. Someone said success is enduring over time. Is working with. Mm -hmm. Those who succeed are not sprinters. They endure over time. Mm -hmm. You can't succeed taking a shortcut because you'll wind up getting cut short. Mm -hmm. It takes time to be a success. Y'all don't know where to shout. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Y'all probably have to go through something in order to get to something. You have to go through changes in order to make a change. It takes time to learn how to handle your own business. Somebody said, it's easy to be a Judas and a sellout. It's time to be a Jesus and sacrifice. You have to endure before you can overcome. You have to face tragedy before you can see triumph. You have to endure midnight before you see the sunrise. That's what I see in a brother named Joseph in the text. I see a brother who knows how to handle his own business. I see someone who knew how to handle what life dished out. This brother could take a lick in and keep on ticking. Joseph had a dream in spite of living a nightmare. Joseph believed in what could be, no matter what was. His reality didn't cause him to lose sight of his possibility. Now, Joseph didn't have an easy life, and yet Joseph knew how to handle his own business. Now, look at it. Joseph was not hated by others. Joseph was despised by his brothers. The folks who did him in was the ones who he grew up with. The ones who wanted to kill him were the ones who were supposed to love. The problem was not the enemy on the street. His problem was jealousy in the house. He didn't have to worry about a drive-by shooting. He was catching hell from family and friends. And please listen to me. Don't let anybody fool you. Sometimes the real trouble or the word are from your own people. Amen. It's not those who, who don't know you, it's the ones who look like you. <laughs> not, from, not from folks who live away across town, from folks who sleep under the same roof. Sometimes the folks who will stab you in the back are those who can get close enough to kiss you on the cheek. Joseph is not deceived by others. Joseph is hated by his brothers. And now let me stop there and let me just say this. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to go back to verse 30, uh, chapter 37, and understand these, 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 these brothers. These brothers hated him. They hated Joseph. They hated him. They were some lackadaisical, listless loser, little need lostness, lateral learning, ecclesiastical warnings. They was, they was just rough. It's, it's, you know, and we're facing this in our own world today. 
thrown in a pit and sold in a slave and winds up in a prison, rejected by his brothers and winds up a slave to a stranger. Life is shattered and his dream is deferred. And here, sometimes what you dream is not what you encounter. What you see and what you envision are not the same. The pain comes before the prosperity. Sometimes trouble precedes the trophy. Sometimes catching hell is the prelude to catching heaven. Joseph had a dream, yet Joseph was living a nightmare. What he encounters is not what he envisions. What he sees is not what he was looking for. What comes his way is not what he expects. But I tell you, even though he becomes a slave, he still has a destiny. Even though he's thrown in prison, he's on his way to the palace. His struggle is the road that leads to his success. What starts out as a strain turns out to be a blessing. Sometimes what you go through is what it takes to get to. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, Jesus. Sometimes what seems to hold you back can be the thing that holds you up. What I learned from Joseph is that if you handle your business, you will get a blessing. If you do what you should, you will, you will get what the Lord promised. If you are faithful over a few things, he will make you ruler over a lot of things. See, God can use the bad to bring out the good. He can take what hurts you and use it to help you. The same thing that had you limping, God can use it and make you leap. Once you were, once, once was your reason for crying, can turn out to be your reason for dancing. With God, who, who you are is not determined by where you are. What you encounter is not the last word on what you shall inherit. Y'all are trying to hear me somewhere. Someone said that God is so awesome that God will empower you to make the best of a bad situation. God will use that bad situation to bring out the best in you to work out what is best for you. You are not determined by your difficulty. Amen. You are not limited to your adversity. You are not bound to your situation. But God is so awesome that the bad that's around you can bring out the best that's in you. Mm. All you have to do yes. is realize favor ain't fair. Amen. That's what Joseph did, and that's all you have to do. See, if you realize favor ain't fair, you can be a success even when others treat you bad. Right, and with God, you will become more than what you are. Mm -hmm. Oppression will not stop you. Enemies cannot slow you. The devil can't stop you. All you have to do is handle your own business. Right. I mean, look at it. Joseph goes to a man's house as a slave and ends up in control. <laughs> Shows up as a slave and ends up as a supervisor. Mm -hmm. Shows up in chains and ends up in charge. I tell you, when God is with you, he can take what happened to you and have it work for you. Somebody said God can take a, lift, a layoff and have it turn into a liftoff. He can take conflict and build confidence. God can take a storm and make you strong. God can take a mess of trouble and make a table in the presence of your enemies. God can take life's better and use it to make life better. It's really not what happens to you, it's how you respond to it. That's right. yeah. Come on now. I know I'm talking to somebody out there. Amen. It's not what you face, it's how you see it. It's not what you're looking at, it's your outlook on what you see. All right, now. No matter what happens to you, God can make it work for you. That's right. mm -hmm. All you have to do is realize favor ain't fair. Amen. What I learned from the word and what I see in the text is that what you do, what you does is not defined by who you are. Amen. But who you are determines what you do. Hmm. Oh, come on. Somebody All talk right, to me. Joseph is sold into slavery, but is more than a slave. He used to live in the hood, but there's no hood living in Joseph. Mm -hmm. People treat him like a nobody, but Joseph sees himself as a somebody. Mm -hmm. Joseph knows how to handle his own business, knows how to be faithful on the job, Knows how to avoid temptation in the workplace. Being faithful on the bottom helps him rise to the top. Not giving in to a woman helps him to be blessed by God. Not whining about his troubles helps him to get real power. Joseph knew favor wasn't fair. He could deal with what life threw his way. He couldn't control what others did, but took charge of his own life. He couldn't make others do right, but he didn't let them cause him to do wrong. Mm. He couldn't stop Potiphar's wife 
from lying on it, but he was determined not to lie with him. Joseph knew how to handle his own business. Somebody said, when you have a destination, you have an expectation that gets you beyond your situation. Come on, man. Y'all are trying to hear this morning. You know what you're going to, and you can deal with what you're going through. Well, my brothers and sisters, all I want to do is tell you how to handle your own business. Do your job and do your duty. Favor to the task and be true to the mission. Hold fast to the dream and don't give up on your vision. Go on and handle your own business. Go on and do what you're supposed to do. Go on and brighten up that corner where you are. Go on and be faithful when life not fair. Be true even when times are tough. Go on and, be, and handle your own business. Just go stand your ground and take your test. Because if you are true and if you are right, the Lord will bless you. If you are honest and if you are real, the Lord will bless you. If you are faithful and if you are patient, the Lord will bless you. Just go on and handle your own business. Just go on and do what the Lord say do. When they criticize you, handle your business. When they laugh at you, handle your business. When they talk about you, handle your business. When they call you everything but a child of God, handle your business. When friends walk out on you, handle your business. When the door's closing your face, handle your business. Just remember who made you and remember who saved you. Go on and handle your own business. Even though favor ain't fair. Joseph had faith. But a lot of things that happened to Joseph wasn't fair. But even though life wasn't always fair, God was always present. Even though life did him wrong, God never let him down. Life hurt him, but God helped him. Favor got him in trouble, but God was a present help in a time of trouble. Favor ain't fair. Somebody up in here, you got an attitude. You got a chip on your shoulder because when you look back over your life, it just hasn't been fair. It's been, you've been going through some changes and you've been going through some ups and downs and you feel like life ain't fair. You feel like God hasn't answered your prayer. Like God hadn't moved. You feel like you haven't gotten a fair break. You feel like the Lord is not with you. You may be right, but let me tell you something else that ain't fair. You are a sinner saved by grace. You were on your way to hell when you heard from heaven. You got dirt in your past, but glory in your future. It ain't fair that he looked beyond your faults and saw your needs. It ain't fair that he woke you up this morning and started you on your way. It ain't fair that he healed your body and heard your cry. It ain't fair that he's been better to you than you've been to yourself. It ain't fair. Favor ain't fair. It ain't fair. He didn't have to do it. He didn't have to do it to wake you up this morning and start you on your way. There are people that didn't get up this morning. Didn't get up. What is your responsibility to God? How can you take it for granted? How can you take your responsibility as a servant that's the only reason you are here is to serve God. Amen. That's the only reason you are here yes. is to serve God. The car, the house, the, yes. the spouse, that's, those are gifts. Amen. Those are gifts. What are you doing for God? How are you loving him for everything he's doing for you? Let's just take this time and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come forth into your house and to hear your blessed word. We just ask you to continue to keep us. Help us to be better people. Help us to do and handle our own business. Lord, we, we face so many trials and tribulations. And sometimes we need a break. Sometimes we need to stop and catch our breath. But that should never stop you from walking forward in your journey. Give us that strength, Lord. We are facing tough times. There's a lot of people out here that don't like you, Lord. Yes. That don't like the fact that we follow you, Lord. And these days they're prepared to shoot us dead for loving you. And all I can say is if, if that's what you want, I'm not going to surrender to anybody else other than Jesus. 
I want to see his face. I want to walk and just sit by his feet. If he just looks my way, I'll be happy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for everything you've done. You didn't have to do it. You didn't have to do it. It is about spiritual maturity and your behavior and how you see the world and how God wants you to see him. Amen. Come on now. Somebody got to help me up in here. It's about your walk. Don't let these things of the world get you caught up and messed up your head. Walk with Jesus. Walk with Jesus. Walk with Jesus. Spend time with him. Fast. Pray. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because there's no place else I'd rather be. No other place I'd rather be than with you, my Lord Jesus. Amen. Father, Son, and